look at that. I'm wondering if he might just be going down to drink. Hello, mister. Good afternoon to you. And the second one's going to be coming up behind shortly. So there's a second one that's just coming through the bush where the first one came from. Now he's not in must, I'm not smelling anything. Ah. Quoted, welcome on board, asking if the bull we've just seen is the bull from Byron's this time. And I think there's a little little herd with him as well. But Byron, uh, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes maybe just to get down there. I mean, it's not too far, but it is far enough uh, that, that there's no way that elephant could have got here from there in that time so pretty sure he is a different bull you can hear them just starting to come out the bush here so with that bull taking that pathway there i want to make sure that we keep that clear because it's likely that the other elephants are going to want to come through there and obviously we don't want to get in their way so you can just about see the head poking through and I seem to remember this was always a spot that elephants liked. Uh, they always like to stop here for a dust bath, so apparently it's really good dust there. And the dust actually just helps to dislodge any uh, parasites that might be on the body. Helps to keep the skin in good condition. And obviously during the summer they will actually put mud all over their bodies as well. And when the mud hardens, then that will fall off and they'll actually scratch against the tree to encourage it to fall off and that can also pull out ticks and any parasites that are caught amongst all the wrinkles in their skin. Now these look young boys so maybe they're his entourage. <laughs> uh, as we were saying earlier on today uh, the young bulls tend to start breaking away from the female herds uh, when they're about 16, 18 years old, and then they go and find older bulls to hang around with, and they learn how to be bulls. They learn how to spar and uh, fight. Uh, well, the same thing, spar and fighting. But they also learn what to do and the etiquette of being male elephants, basically. So it looks like they are learning from the big male who passed us. Now, I think that big male was possibly in his late 30s maybe early 40s maybe slightly later maybe mid 40s now that's quite a young a young bull that's trailing behind so there might be some females in here as well it looks like they might go down to drink so i think it's worth us going onto the wall again they've taken a slightly different route. So the big male carried on walking towards the lodge, but these are just going down to the water's edge here. So it might be that we get to see them drinking. Hi, Yaku. Oops. Oh. Yaku wondering how far elephants walk 
during the day, so I just misjudged. There's a little bit of a, a dip in the road there, and I just misjudged that one, so we were going for a little wee slide there. But Yaku wanting to know how far elephants walk in a day. And again, it depends on the time of year. This time of year, they will walk much further looking for food and water. Yeah, there we go. Then during the summer, now the summer they tend to do small close loops of figure of eights actually, when they in an area looking for food and they get wider and wider as they go further into summer, uh, into winter, sorry. Oh, that's nice. Unfortunately, I'm the wrong way around, but there's some impala sparring just to the left of the elephants, and the elephants are drinking as well. How about that? Oh, elephants are quite particular about the water that they drink. They don't like having... Uh, any mud or grit or anything like that mixed in so you notice they'll actually skim the surface of the water with the trunk and get the water that's on top so you can see they're not putting their trunk right in the water <laughs> sure those impala rams are also really going for it at the back there and the other big bulls on his way back to join these three boys. Look at that. So Exquisite X, I think the, the name was, wanting to know how much water an elephant can hold in its trunk. Um, it will de depend on the size of the elephant, of course, but some of the big adults could hold up to 14 litres in the trunk. Now, I wonder if we're going to see a bit of a standoff. Now, these elephants, we definitely saw them all together in the drainage line. But there seems to be a bit of a interesting thing going on here. Now, we it looks like they're wanting to greet each other. The trunks are actually being held as if they were going to put them in each other's mouths. There we go. There's the younger bull putting his trunk in the older bull's mouth. So maybe they didn't quite greet. There we go. In the drainage line. <laughs> Apparently that's the best part to drink from. <laughs> Again, look at him. He's just got the tip of his trunk in the water, filtering off the slightly cleaner water on the surface. Now, they could drink up to 100 litres in one go. <laughs> Chantel, synchronised drinking. Oh, and we've got another young bull coming in. Yeah, definitely synchronised drinking. <laughs> so there's a, you, a little bit of a myth that elephants can uh, use their trunk like a straw and drink it straight through, because obviously that is their nose. So they have to hold it in their trunk and then squirt it into their mouth. On average a day, uh, a big bull elephant could take in maybe 200 litres, 300 litres of water. If, then, if there's something wrong, then they will drink obviously a lot more. And if they're drinking up to 400 or 600 litres, that means there is something not quite right with them. There we go. There's the greeting. Is he allowed to put the trunk in the mouth? Oh, just heard a bit of a trumpet. There's some more elephants to our right in the drainage line. Now, I did hear someone found uh, some leopard tracks actually at Spaghetti Junction. <laughs> so, he got moved out by the bull elephant, so the babies decided, you know what, I'm going to show my power to the impala instead. <laughs> I don't know if you kind of saw that. I was just having a look for the elephants, see if there's any more movement from us behind. 
But uh, they have found, yeah, just keep a watch on that ball. He's not happy with the Nyala and the Impala females. So there's a Nyala male just coming into shot there. And the Impala females heading a little bit further around the waterhole. I think that's a good idea, girls. Oh, great. I think it does sound like everyone saw the little, little ball. Oh, there we go. Oh! <laughs> That was towards oh, what we got going on there. <laughs> What's their little one? Oh, it's the Nyala bull on the damn wall. Now he's going to be interesting when he's a big bull, <laughs> if he's throwing his weight around now. Oh, here comes the rest of the herd. I was going to say, he's a little bit young to be on his own. Here comes the rest of the herd. That's where his family are. So many species all at once, definitely Catherine, it is getting a bit cooler, animals do tend to come down to the water holes to drink late afternoon, especially in the summer, but they're all coming down to drink now. So I'm going to stay on the walks, I'm hoping they're going to take the same route as the other elephants. <laughs> it's been quite boisterous. <laughs> I'm just hoping that it's, they don't think it's me that's upsetting their little boy. So I'm just gonna keep my eye out on them. But like I was saying, I heard them talking about leopard tracks coming up from Spaghetti Junction. And Spaghetti Junction is the next junction down from here. So they may be finding, and they said that the leopard tracks went north, so I thought maybe hearing the trumpeting, oh, there's a little one. Oh, there's lots of little ones. Here we go. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Mum was nudging the uh, little boy who was causing all the commotion there, nudging him down towards the waterhole again. So perhaps the trumpeting was actually more to communicate with the little boy, see where he's gone maybe, rather than them being scared by a leopard. But I'll keep my eyes peeled. Perhaps the leopards are making their way up here. That would be nice. So a few people are a bit concerned about the lapwing. So the lapwing is rather just making a lot of noise. They do tend to get a little bit upset, but it is out the way. So you don't need to worry about that. There's the, okay, so we might get a bit of a greeting going on here. The bull's actually greeting the female and checking to see if she's in estrus. I don't know if you saw, there was the, the trunk just going between the legs again and apparently she she looks like she might be an estrus she's the side of her uh the, the gland by her eye is actually weeping so that can be a sign that they're in estrus or it could be a sign they're a bit distressed so they might have bumped into the leopard a bit further down because it doesn't look like um he's responding to her being an estrus and yeah, you can see the lapwing just to the right of the bull. So it's in, it's in between the bull and the, the cow. There it is. 
Now they shouldn't have eggs this time of year. There we go. There's the greeting between the bull and the female. So, sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, tell a lie, that's another young bull. So that was the bulls, I think, that were with him earlier. So possibly wanting to try a little bit of sparring there. Gerber Waller. Interesting question there. Is there any explanation as to why the tails get raised horizontally? And it's funny actually, there are a number of animals that do it. Rhinos, giraffes, when they are scared, or when they are uh, excited or becoming aggressive, that tail gets raised. And I'm, I'm actually not sure exactly why what causes that and it could be so it is a very much uh, there's no way it can be misunderstood that it is actually uh, a sign to say something is wrong because uh, as I say sometimes these animals use their body language to actually communicate um, elephant eyesight is not very good so that for an elephant I would say Possibly not, and especially with, with the rhino as well. I'd have to do a bit of digging, see if anyone's actually done any research on that as to why the tail gets raised. Let's say we all know it does, but to why it gets raised, that is an interesting one. This is absolutely fantastic. Rushni. Rushni also making the observation that she, uh, she's often seen the elephants running towards the dam as if there's not enough water around for them. And I think it's the excitement. Buffalo do the same as well. I think it is that excitement, possibly wanting to get there before everyone else muddies the water. Because as I say, they can be quite particular about their water. This time of year, there isn't a lot of water around, but these elephants also know where to go digging for it. Again, the spaghetti junction I mentioned, they do have uh, the, the sandy areas where you can find where the elephants have actually been digging. And sometimes you can actually catch them drinking there and they'll, take the, they'll wait their turn. So they'll dig, they'll wait for the water to fill up the hole and drink. And obviously that water is going to be filtered by the sand, so it's going to be nice and clean and they will actually wait their turn. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, so there is actually uh, a black blacksmith lapwing nest they do still have a nest, or they did. Apparently, one of them, what, uh, the zoomies, actually saw one of the elephants actually stand on the nest. I wasn't sure where the nest might be. So now I'm understanding why uh, people were getting a bit concerned. I thought you were getting concerned for the bird. Say, so I know the bird's going to keep well out of the way. they were trying to keep the elephants from trampling their nest but unfortunately this time it didn't work I was going to say I've actually seen lapwings dive bomb and because they weren't really doing that I thought they were just being fussy about the elephants coming down because they do tend to get quite vocal um, but when they're trying to protect a nest I have seen them dive bombing the animals trying to keep them away from the nest which I didn't see this time but unfortunately, as I say, possibly because they haven't done it, they've actually lost their nest, sadly. Oh, it could be that this lapwing pair 
are not as experienced. Maybe they just put their nest in a slightly too much of an open area. And so it'd be interesting to find out if someone has a screenshot and maybe put an arrow on it to show me where that nest might have been. Because unfortunately uh, for the lapwings, they they don't make a song and dance about where their nest is purely because obviously they don't want to show where their eggs are and the eggs are extremely well camouflaged as well oh oh we've got the nyala look <laughs> the elephants are not liking the wildebeest or the nyala i think we need to maybe move they're not happy about those wildebeest coming in <laughs> wildebeest have decided you know what elephants it's in the drainage line because they are being extremely protective considering it is wildebeest but did you see this female right up front making sure the babies are behind her absolutely fantastic so I think we're going to see what Byron's caught up with and we're going to just reposition ourselves and see if we can get another view for you.